Uh, first up, I'll give you a, a heavily unbranded slide, and that's because uh, I actually wear two hats and I couldn't really decide what I was doing. Um, so I didn't really want to uh, uh, brand heavily with either organization. <laughs> um, so I'm doing this privately. Um, uh, so um, the two organizations I work for are uh, the Open Geospatial Consortium uh, and uh, Surround Australia, where I, um, I work with Nick Carr. Um, and many of you know both of us. Um, so the title uh, was given was uh, Improving Vocabulary Content and Access Interoperability Using Profile and Content Negotiation by Profile, which turns out to be a slightly huge subject. Um, so I'm going to quickly go through uh, a few things, some of um, the things Nick's been working on, uh, and a few perspectives uh, around um, the work I'm doing at OGC uh, in particular, um, which uh, has, has been driving my involvement in this process. So introduction, well, that's me. Um, uh, so the first thing, I'm going to presume that people are largely aware of this concept of FAIR, which is quite popular coming out of the European Union. Um, about interoperability, talking about things being findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And there's a link there to a write-up, um, which will be updated shortly uh, um, when we introduce the stuff I'm going to show you, um, uh, which is uh, the VocPres um, application, which Nick, I think, has previously described. Um, and uh, so there's a, there's a write up there and a reference. We won't have time to go into much detail, but it talks a little bit about the nature of interoperability from those different viewpoints. Um, and ultimately, most of those things actually uh, are reliant on being able to understand what things mean, which means the idea is that there are uh, pieces of information that can be semantically grounded. You can find out what they mean. You can follow somehow the metadata trail to a definition. Uh, but this actually implies that that metadata is fair too, that when you find the metadata itself, it should be you know, well, findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. And that's where sort of vocabulary services obviously come in heavily, preaching, preaching to the converted here. Um, so I'm gonna go into a little bit about the nature of profiling uh, because it may not be that obvious for my experience working with other groups, but it's actually quite a common practice, either implicitly or explicitly. Um, generally speaking, when you have a, a, uh, a general purpose um, uh, model like SCOS or DCAT or um, OWL or anything else, um, just trying an addressing standard, when you actually try to apply it, you tend to come down to say, well, here's a simpler view of it that I need. Now, here's the constraints. Now, I'm not actually going to have multiple possible authors. I'm actually going to have one responsible author, and it's going to be a member of you know, my organization. So you end up with constraints when you actually implement anything. Um, so from the FAIR perspective, profiles are easier to describe than than a whole bunch of such constraints. If you have a whole suite of such constraints and you want to find data which follows them, how do you do that? It's actually not that easy. But if they form a well-known profile, you could potentially ask, okay, show me everything which actually um, uh, conforms to the RDA um, vocabulary profile. Um, maybe more meaningful or show me anything which, um, uh, which uh, conforms to um, the you know, uh, a, uh, Australian government geospatial data profile. Something like that is much easier to ask for than trying to detail all the constraints and try to match. Accessible means that the profile has a name. You can actually ask for um, the data potentially by profile if there's more than one option. I'll show you that in a second. Interoperable, it means that you can declare your intention to be interoperable across a suite of these constraints rather than trying to have to interpret and analyze all those detailed constraints, many of which may be written just down in, in words somewhere. And because they're named objects, they become um, named, uh, they can be reused, um, and they can also be inherited. 
one profile can constrain another profile. So I'm going to go into the the deep side, which probably Nick wouldn't have gone into, um, which is the OGC view of the world of why we're interested in profiles, is that we're aware that in, in the real world, there are lots of different types of information models. And we've really had a one size fits all data modeling methodology for standards. Um, but when the, you know, on the right hand side, the implementations, people are doing different things with those standards at, with different levels of detail. And a really typical pattern um, is this idea that we get um, observations which are then aggregated into some sort of dimensional warehouse with a bunch of descriptive metadata with all our vocabularies, et cetera. And then we want to use that. And at the end of the day, we spit something out to the client at this far bottom right-hand corner who might then want to go back and find out what something actually means. So we end up with a range of different types of models um, on the left hand side, this dimensional, how do we going to organize things? Um, then we have these general purpose models like observations and measurements or SCOS or things like that. Then we have domain concepts, which is where our control vocabularies tend to come in, um, but also you know, specific um, uh, uh, relationships. From the field, we tend to get very simplified message schemas come in, which refer to those things, but don't have a lot of detail about the model. And what tends to happen is we tend to, we tend to bind the, the vocabularies to the data models by some sort of implementation profile, which is our unit of interoperability, which allows us to simplify the implementations, which allows us to generate um, uh, these sort of common schemas, um, which include metadata. So allow us to aggregate simple data into these data warehouses. And that's a really, really typical pattern, but what we're starting to know, and probably it sounds obvious, but this middle tier of actually understanding what a profile is and the fact that it's actually a, um, a thing which people do in order to be able to use both general purpose models and, um, and domain vocabularies consistently hasn't really been formalized in the past. And that's, again, the work Nick and I have been working on is formalizing that. So I'm just going to jump to a couple of examples, um, if I can make that go away. Okay. So here's an example of a uh, vocabulary, um, which is a profile, which is a asset description metadata schema. And this is actually a profile of, of DCAT, which it says down here, for which identifies a whole series of different um, terms which come from other vocabularies which are recommended for use and declares just a few of its own where it says, okay, here's, here's a particular one that uh, we want to declare because none of the vocabularies we're profiling supply it. So this is a very, very typical pattern out there in the world. And at the moment, the profiling description is a document. This document, is a um, is a declaration of the intent, and there's a turtle file, or no, a, a, a vocabulary file, which, generally speaking, is just an aggregation of all these things coming from different places. Different places, really, really common um, uh, uh, problem. Okay, so that's just a that's just a uh, a bit of grounding the fact that profiles kind of exist and are real, and what they are. Um, the next uh, aspect that uh, Nick wanted to talk about was the role of profiles, in particular around um, the, the publication of uh, vocabularies. So the tool that, um, the, the, which I believe has been presented and is sort of reasonably well known, Vocpres, is an example of a um, of a uh, model that, so a, a, a tool that actually uses a profile of SCOS. There's certain types of SCOS aspects it is looking for, it depends on, it recognizes, and then it presents those. And sure enough, we can, you know, we can walk through. And this is an example consistent with um, what we've just seen where the, um, this is a, a vocabulary extracted out of a data model. Um, in this case, a standard hydrology data model I'm familiar with. Um, if I, 
But where it sort of becomes a bit more interesting is the fact that this data model itself may be available in different forms for different people. And so the idea of there being a, um, uh, a set of alternative profiles which are available that you can ask for. So we can potentially ask for um, and this, this, this view of available profiles is itself a profile. It's called the alternates profile. Um, but we can also ask for you know, weird and wonderful things like you know, show me the class diagram for this particular um, resource. So that's a profile which is in a different representation paradigm, but it's a subset of the data. data. We can also ask for, um, you know, show me the OWL model. And in this case, we show, show me the OWL model as um, HTML, or we can show me the OWL model as link data and JSON, if I think this should be existing, yep. Or we could show me the OWL model. No. So we have content negotiation, standard content negotiation, plus this negotiation around what type of representation do I want. And there's an example here where, um, uh, the, where this concept of uh, punning comes up and the object is um, accessible as, uh, this is actually a, a little thing I have to fix, which is why this isn't live yet. That's actually, haven't quite got that bit right. Um, so it's actually visible as a vocabulary. So effectively we take a SCOS profile view of the OWL object and say, right, every declaration is a, is a, is a vocabulary concept and we can look at it through the lens of SCOS through this tool. So that's VocPres and profiles interacting via, and this concept of content negotiation by profile. And there are standards for each of these things and the definitions are, um, uh, are available um, for those uh, via the link I had earlier, the, um, the OGC definition server, which was, um, so this actually has links to all those standards. So it's actually a reasonable, the good starting point for just understanding the concepts and the nature. Um, uh, there are also links built into um, VocPres, I think. Um, I think it talks about, um, I think it's got a bunch of, um, actually, sorry, no, that's, that's, that's not relevant. I'll, I'll, anyway, I'll skip on. Um, uh, so there's another profile um, which uh, Nick's been working on using the same link data API, and that's a profile based on DCAT. So instead of a profile based on SCOS for, for um, documentation, it's a profile based on DCAT. And in fact, one of the things that um, uh, we're in the process of setting up is a DCAT catalog of available profiles. So it's a little bit circular and eating our own dog food. As here's an example where the, um, a, uh, the, the entry in the, um, in the DCAT uh, catalog um, is, um, so let me just go back to the, the root of it. There's a series of um, available um, uh, uh, profiles which are available and each profile itself has a series of resources or distributions which are available for themselves, uh, which are available for this. And um, so, there, so that's, that's another data profile um, and it's actually a catalog of profiles. So the ability to make these profiles reusable so that um, uh, the, the content negotiation by profile is starting to use a bunch of uh, reasonably well-known profiles is the work in progress. So at this stage where we're at is that uh, Nick's developed a whole bunch of uh, profiles around his work with Australian Government Link Data Working Group. I've developed a bunch of profiles around my work with the OGC uh, in terms of what they need. And we're currently looking at consolidating and, and categorizing which of those are reusable and which of them are, are idiosyncratic to our own organizations. Um, so finally, um, this is an example of profiles being generated um, from data models uh, in a, in this case, an application domain in agriculture. And we can see that this profile is a profile of a couple of different um, uh, external models 
um, around agriculture, and a whole bunch of resources are available, you know, uh, shackle constraints for the profile. So um, we can basically find a shackle derivation. And this is, okay, that's kind of interesting. Profiles is also a way to find all the representations, which is a kind of profiling of the underlying model. Um, and there's also some tooling, which is, Nick probably wouldn't have gone here, but I'm, I'll show you which is uh, work I'm doing, which is generating all these different versions of a vocabulary, all the different profiles automatically from the underlying information model, as well as analyzing the external context and finding out you know, what, so going back to our, our first pattern here, analyzing this and finding out actually what constraints does that put on DCAT? What constraints does it put on SCOS? And actually building a, um, uh, a, a, the set of available profiles um, for that, the, that vocabulary, in this case, a, a data model, uh, fairly automatically. So spitting out all these different flavors um, uh, of profiles for a vocabulary. So that's a quick overview of a suite of interacting pieces that are held together by this concept of the profiles model, which is our ability to say, how does this set of constraints relate to that set of constraints, to another model or another set of constraints? And what are the implementation uh, resources which are relevant for a user to use that? Um, so, and then the, that profile model itself is then um, uh, driving the presentation layer, which basically knows how to do things with specific profiles and offer all the different profiles which may be available to the user. So it kind of links it all together. So it's been this missing piece of glue around all these different disparate practices about we have our models and we have our needs to use them in different ways. How do they all link together? And I think that's probably a good place to try to stop.